today is august fourth of two thousand and seventeen and i am interviewing mark goff in taylorville, illinois mark is forty eight years old having been born on december second of nineteen sixty eight my name is sue burkholder and i will be the interviewer uh, for the recording, would you please state what branch of service that you served? I was in the Illinois Army National Guard. Okay. All right. Well, let's start with um, just some very early information, like where you were born, a little bit about your parents, siblings, family, um, and then we'll go from there. Okay. I was born in Robinson, Illinois. Uh, I have one brother. He is see, three years younger than me, so he'd be 45. I have a stepsister, two half sisters. My parents were divorced when I was three years old, so uh, I've got a step. I've spent most of my life with my stepdad and my mom. Uh, they both live in Oblong, Illinois, which is also where I went to school most of my life. Um, I have two grandmothers that are still living that are in Oblong. And, See, growing up, I uh, played a lot of sports, football, baseball, basketball, um, lived on a farm, grew up on a farm. Uh, my stepdad was a farmer for several years until uh, in the 80s there was a drought, so they lost money on the farm, so he went and got a job at Hershey mm -hmm. uh, Candy Factory, and now he's still working there making chocolate he's uh works in the chocolate plant making chocolate my mom was a nurse for i don't know probably 15 20 years uh, an rn worked at a hospital in Terre Haute, indiana and also at the hospital in robinson uh, my brother is a nurse also an rn he's a a uh, does uh, catheter heart catheterizations, pediatric heart catheterization. Um, and that's about it as far as my, as far as growing up. Did any of your family, um, other family members, either immediate or, you know, aunts, uncles, whatever, did they, any of them serve in the yeah. military? Yeah, I had um, my great grandfather on my dad's side, uh, Clow Goff, he was in, World War One. My grandfather on my dad's side was in World War Two. My grandfather on my mom's side served in World War Two. My stepdad's father served in World War Two. In um, I know he was in the Pacific Pacific Islands. Was an uh, airplane mechanic. I had a couple of uncles that were in Vietnam. One, my aunt's first husband, he was, he actually was uh, killed in Vietnam. And she remarried uh, my uncle, who she's still married to now, and he was also served in Vietnam. Uh, I think that's all as far as family members that were in that I can remember that were in the military. All right, so um, uh, you're going through, I assume you were, or let me ask, when did you start thinking about joining the military? Um, I had a friend that when I was in high school, would have been my junior year of high school, he was in the National Guard and the Effingham unit, the same unit that I, that I joined, and I was thinking about going to college, getting money for college, and he said he told me you could get the GI Bill, uh, tuition paid for, and they'd help you with your student loans, that type of thing. And so I enlisted during my junior year of high school. Between the summer between my junior and senior year, I went to basic training, and then what they call it split option, where you go to your basic training between your junior and senior year and then after you graduate high school you go to your advanced training the AIT you go do that after you graduate high school so I went two separate summers I went the summer between my junior and senior year for basic 
And then after I graduated, I went back and did my AIT. Um, well, tell me about uh, basic training. What um, When you first got there, what were your first impressions? <laughs> well, when I first got there, people try to get you ready for it and kind of at the unit, I'd already been in for, been enlisted, enlisted in February of 86, and uh, fe yeah, February of 86, that's right. and, and met, or in, it would have been June of 86, the beginning of June, I went to basic training. And so from February to June at the unit, they kind of tried to get us ready prepare us to go to basic and let us know what it was going to be like and, but well, I really wasn't ready when I got there it was a big surprise and you heard all the stories about how you you know they yell doing a lot of yelling and screaming and the discipline and push-ups and um, but you're really not ready for it mentally when you get there uh, I, it didn't take it took me about two weeks or so to get used to it but for the first it was just a big shock to the system at first, um, having somebody screaming at you constantly, and and um, which is just all part of it. But uh, when you haven't been around, I'd played sports, had coaches yell and stuff, but it's nothing like nothing like basic training. And um, when we, the physical part of it, I was in fairly good shape, so it was more the mental part that that uh, was the most difficult just getting used to um, the discipline the, the uh, getting up at four o'clock in the morning uh, and like I said I was already in decent shape but a lot of push-ups a lot of sit-ups I was I went to basic in Fort Benning Georgia and uh, both summers I was there, it was for some, the summer I went to basic, summer I went to AIT, they had a drought and it was like 100 degrees every single day, 110, 115 heat index. Mm -hmm. um, so it was hot, you do push-ups on the sidewalk, get blisters on your hands. So it wasn't fun, but like I said, once the you were there for a couple weeks, um, got into the routine, made friends, you know, they built camaraderie with everybody. Uh, it, it got a lot better once you got the, once the mental part wasn't so much there anymore, the, um, just the initial shock of being there and being away from your family and um, friends and so, no, I was, there were a few people from my unit in Effingham, I think, well, there are other people from Illinois. My entire my entire platoon at basic training there it was what was called a buddy platoon. Mm -hmm. So the entire platoon, we were all people. We were all enlisted in the Illinois Army National Guard. So there was 50 of us. All of us were from Illinois. There was another, and the whole company was like that. There was one platoon from Illinois, one platoon from Indiana, one platoon from New York and then one was a mix of people from different states and uh, so and a lot of them were in the same battalion that I was in different units but in the same battalion so we got to know each other and we went to summer camps together and that type of thing so it, it, it wasn't like we went to basic training and then all went separate ways to different units or different places in the all over the world, we all went back to Illinois, and and so we got to see each other again, but um, at summer camps and that type of thing. And then the next summer, when we went to AIT, a lot of us were back again, uh, back together. Uh, but there was one person from my unit, from the unit in Effingham, that went with me. We we were in the same company, in the same platoon, and same squad. And um, so it was nice to have people there you knew, and right at first, especially yeah. so at least one person that you already knew and had spent time with, and mm -hmm. so kind of supported each other, mm -hmm. moral support and right. that type of thing. But um, what did you draw on that first two weeks to get you through? 
I was just, for the first couple of weeks, I was just trying to make it through, actually. It was, uh, um, we, we did get some phone privileges, not very much, but um, it was really limited the first couple of weeks. But when letters, letters from home, talking to people from home, my parents, my, the girl I was dating at the time, um, but it was mostly just for, especially for the first two weeks, the initial, uh, the initial two weeks, like I said before, is that seemed to be the, uh, time where you kind of get acclimated and, and figure out what's going on, learn all the rules and that type of thing. So I, I'd say I would, at the first couple of weeks, it was just. I was just concentrating on getting through the initial shock of it and um, you know, thinking, you know, it's going to be worth it when I get through here. I'm going to be able to uh, pay for college, that type of thing. So, and I knew I was going back home to my family in a few months. So that's basically what I was concentrating on for the first couple of weeks. So after you got through that first couple of weeks, how was the rest of basic training? Tell me about that and some of the things that that you experienced well I got to uh, after the first couple of weeks it started we started having a little more fun uh, getting a little more free recreation time where and we would do st you could do your own especially in uh, AIT uh, you had time and you could do your own exercises which we did PT every morning and or where you we would run push-ups sit-ups calisthenics that type of thing but then during our free time we were free to do our own uh, exercises make up our own routines uh, i'm trying to think what all we did we did a lot of run uh, running we would have uh, sprints races that type of thing um, push up set up competitions see who could do the most um, trying to think what else to answer your question can you repeat the question again I just about the rest of the time after oh, the rest of the time basically yeah. and then um, since I was in it we were all in most of us were infantrymen mm -hmm. so we spent a lot of time in the woods a lot of time with marksmanship um, which everybody does at basic training but then also when in the uh, in AIT we spent a lot of time, uh, like when we went out, what they called a bivouac, where you where you stay out, and we were out in the woods for two weeks, and uh, dug foxholes, fighting positions, camouflaged them, that type of thing. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what they called it, um, obstacle course. That was one of my favorite parts of it. Running the obstacle course where you do the rope, climb over the wall, crawl on the Constantino wire. Um, had to swim across the swamp, got chased by water moccasins. When, but uh, nobody got bit, thankfully. But, um, but in Georgia, there's a lot. South Georgia, it was around uh, along the Georgia. Alabama border, mm -hmm. so there's a river right there and a lot of swampy land. And so they did have a swim across part of a swampy area, and uh, we didn't see the snakes when we first jumped in, but then heard people hollering, and then it makes you swim a lot faster when you got, you know, there's water moccas moccasins chasing you. But um, that was one thing I remember. I, I actually finished second in the obstacle course out of 50 people, so that was one of the highlights for me. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, the marksmanship, when I first went, I, I didn't grow up, I mean I grew up on a farm, but I didn't do much hunting and stuff like that, so I hadn't really uh, shot a rifle very much. So when I first, when we first started, I wasn't quite getting it as far as the marksmanship. And then one day they drew a picture of the site that where you the way you aim, drew a picture of the peephole site, which there's a round site, mm -hmm. and then through it is the site on the end of the rifle, and uh, I wasn't putting it in the right spot. 
once they showed, drew it on the board, it clicked, then I figured out how, why I wasn't aiming right. And after that, I think the next time I, we went and qualified, I had 36 targets out of 40. Mm -hmm. So it was just a, I, I had, wasn't familiar with rifles and it, it took me, it took that being drawn on the board and showing exactly how to aim. And after that, I was fine. I, I learned how to shoot the rifle. And, but uh, then grenade, the grenade course, that was one of my favorite parts also. We threw grenades. Uh, we also got to throw live grenades. The, the ones that on the course were, for training were live, but then we went to a range and got to throw a live grenades. So that was pretty neat because I never saw, did see combat, but um, so that when you actually got to use live, live ammunition, live grenades, um, that kind of, of uh, it was a reality check, so you knew what it was going to be like if you ever had to, if you were, kind of gave you a, a, um, a, a sense of what it would be like if somebody was actually shooting at you because they were shooting live bullets over your head. There were explosions going off all around you uh, in different training that we did. So um, that was the part I liked the best was just the physical part of it, the being out in the, being out in the woods, um, and like I said, learn how, learn how to shoot the rifle, throw the grenades, uh, the live fire exercises, and uh, then, built, like I said, building the camaraderie with the rest of the people that we were there with. Mm -hmm. cool. So, um, you come to the, well, you come to the end of your uh, basic and then um, you wait another year before you go to AIT and just tell me a little bit about AIT. Um, I, I touched on it a little bit but uh, w when we went back to AIT like I said there were a, a lot of the same people that were that, there and from the year before so there were people I knew already uh, so there were several of us that were back from the year before and um, the second year I knew what when I went back I knew what to expect so it wasn't the big shock you know when like it was for basic training when you first got there and and um, so the mental part wasn't near what it was now the physical part the second year I was definitely in the best shape of my life after I left basic training but then AIT was actually the physical part of it we ran a lot more miles, did a lot more push-ups, a, a lot more um, PT. They expected a lot more of you because they knew most of us, uh, the ones that were coming back for split training, and then there were also people who were already in the military uh, that were in uh, the regular army, or some. there were some that came over from other branches of the military, but there were pe people changing their jobs, changing their MOS, mm -hmm. and um, were coming back to so there were uh, specialists sergeants um, so it was just a different it wasn't everybody everybody wasn't new mm -hmm. so it was kind of a more I'd say relaxed atmosphere than it was the uh, basic training and so it seemed like to me anyway it was easier to relax and learn things and um, it wasn't like basic training where you were a lot of time you were scared you know you were there was a big fear factor at uh, basic training because you were scared and nervous a lot about what was going on what was going to happen because you didn't know what to expect but at AIT it was like I said it was more relaxed laid back um, they still did a lot of yelling and screaming and you know, the drill sergeants did and, um, but a lot of the stuff uh, when they would yell and uh, say stuff to us, a lot of it was, I mean, you had to make yourself not laugh because some of the stuff, some of the stuff they said was so funny, but, um, or it struck me as funny anyway. But, um, and even when they would yell at me, it was hard to keep a straight face, but because you knew nothing was actually going to happen. As long as you weren't disrespectful, you weren't going to get in any trouble. But, um, and what did you study in AIT? I, I was an infantryman, so 
it was infantry training. It was a lot of the same stuff from basic um, and uh, let's see, we did. We I was trying to think. I don't remember. I, I was an anti armament specialist. That's what my job was. So I fired the law and uh, dragon, which the law was a shoulder fired um, missile system for anti armor and uh, vehicles and that type of thing. And then the dragon was on a bipod and it was a, um, a wire guided missile system, which that now it's the tow, I think. I think the dragon might be obsolete by now. But because um, before I, before my uh, enlistment was up, in 92 they started using the tow more often and I think the dragon went out I don't know it still might be in service but but um, they started using the tow a lot more so I never got to fire one of those but I was trying to remember if we did those in AIT I don't remember if I did them in AIT fired those in AIT or if we did it when I, we were back at our unit but I know we did fire I guess since I was an anti-armor specialist got to fire live uh, a live, I got to live fire a law and a dragon, um, which, like I said, if you hadn't been in combat and done that type of thing before, it was it was pretty neat the way things were. And the the, uh, uh, the dragon was a lot lar larger than the um, law, but I'm kind of getting off topic a little <laughs> bit, but. Um, I was just trying to remember if we did that at, at AIT or not, but I'm not sure if we did. But AIT, it was just a lot. Since I was an infantryman, we had a lot of uh, road marches where I think we had a 10 mile or 10 or 12 mile mile road march um, where you're in full gear, um, helmet, rifle, all your. Um, web gear which is your where you got all your ammunition on your belt canteen um, carrying a full rucksack full of uh, all your equipment um, so that was one of the most difficult parts of AIT because by, by the time I got done my both the bottom of both feet were basically one solid blister mm -hmm. but um, plus it like I said it was hot both years um, so it was a lot, of it, a lot of time there was miserable because we were, like I said, we were outside a lot. Um, bugs everywhere, fire ants, because we were in Georgia, um, that red clay. And, uh, but um, it was just more of the, the infantry training was just a lot of the, like I said before, um, Dig in fighting positions, uh, camouflaging them, uh, learning about the different uh, fighting techniques, uh, reconnaissance, all that type of thing. And um, the AIT really wasn't a whole lot different than basic for as far as infantrymen go because you do a lot of the same things, but um, it was a, just a um, more in depth as far as the training, and it was harder. Not the, the physical part was harder. Not the the mental part was a lot easier. Okay, so um, after AIT, and when you started into um, your uh, service in the National Guard, um, what um, uh, what did you do there? Um, were you ever deployed anywhere? during that time and tell me about that. Okay. Uh, in the, I was in Effingham in the Illinois Army National Guard, second, it was second, inf second infantry, or second battalion, 130th Infantry Division. A and um, we, most of the time, you, in the National Guard, you just do weekends, one week in a month, two weeks out of the summer. And, uh, during the summertime, we would go to Wisconsin or Minnesota, uh, 
camp, it was uh, Ripley in Minnesota, and I'm trying to remember where we went, in Wisconsin, I'm McCoy, Fort McCoy in Wisconsin. Um, and uh, both those places, it was, you don't think of the northern states like that being real hot, but it was always um, be hot during the day, during the summer camp. Rained, it seemed like it rained the entire time we were there. Both, every year, both places, it seemed like there was a lot of rain, uh, it was hot, and then at night, it would rain a lot and then it'd be cold. So you got a little bit of both. But, um, and then also I, we went to the Philippines for, that would have been in November of 87, 1987, we went to the Philippines to guard an ammunition depot. And I think we were there for three weeks. I got an overseas ribbon for that. Um, and basically, it was um, there were anti-government rebels that they were worried about getting into the where the ammunition depot was. So we, um, our whole battalion went, and we would. I think it was a, a couple of squads at a time would be on duty and guard the ammunition depot, and. Um, and then part of it was a vacation, you know, when we, when we, you would just work like a regular job, work like an eight hour shift, and then we would have free time where we, um, we went to the beach, went um, uh, snorkeling, that type of thing, um, and just saw the sights, and that was the only time I was ever overseas, so it was kind of, it was kind of neat uh, being there and just, and I was only 18, so I, um, it was just a good experience. That was probably my favorite experience the entire time I was in the military. So um, you, you did, I think you mentioned earlier, even in starting in basic, you made friends. Are there any that have continued, that continued through your service? Um, really, I'm not, I don't know if it was, when I got out in '92, there were some. There were a couple people that I still knew that I was at, went to college with. Like I, I can back up a little bit. Like I said, I, I did the um, one of the main reasons I got in the military to begin with was for the schooling, and um, I went to Lincoln Trail College in Robinson, junior college, got my associate's degree, and then I went to. Eastern Illinois in Charleston and got my bachelor's degree and my master's degree and uh, so I got GI Bill all the way through that entire time um, I used up I think most of the part most of the uh, to it where they pay your tuition but um, but the military did it made a big difference because if I wouldn't have had the GI Bill and the tuition assistance and that type of thing, I wouldn't have had the money to go to college. So it was a good thing that I did it. But um, as far as relationships, um, I don't know if it's different when you're in the, when you're enlisted in the regular army or Navy, Air Force, Marines, but um, I didn't really stay close to many people that, um, I still talk to a few on Facebook and that type of thing, still message a few people, but other than that, um, once I got once I got out in '92, I didn't really have much contact with anybody I was in with. Okay. So, um, so you you finished school after you were, or actually during the time probably you were. Yeah, there, yeah. Because it was guard. Right. So you could go. To so school. I could go to school at the same yeah. time. I just went to my. Uh, well, at the same time I was in college, I was going to my monthly, my one week in a month, mm -hmm. two weeks during the summer. Um, and when, the, during the first Gulf War, uh, I was, a, we thought we might get called up. We never did. Now, in the, when they, I think the second Gulf War in Afghanistan, the Effingham unit went, but I was already out by then. But 
when when the f first Gulf War occurred, that was the early '90s. Um, like I said, we were, I was a little bit nervous thinking we might go, but we didn't. They didn't end up call, activating our unit, so we didn't go. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, when they when you're in the National Guard. It's not like you have to in the regular army where you have to wait till you get out and then do your schooling. You can do your schooling at the same time, do college. Um, so the entire time that I was in the National Guard, so I, I hadn't finished my bachelor's degree yet when I was in the National, when I was still in the National Guard, but I had already had my associate's degree, and I think I had a year, a year and a half in on my bachelor's degree before I got out in 92 and then I finished my bachelor's degree in 94 finished my master's degree I think in 97 because after I after I finished my bachelor's degree I went and worked around, about a year in Chicago and then went back after after a year so it would have been in 95 went back to Charleston and I uh, finished my master's degree in 97. And what did you study? Uh, physical education was my major for my, for my bachelor's and master's degree, but my master's degree was in exercise science and cardiac rehab. Okay. Good. Well, is there, um, is just as you look back over your military experiences, um, is there anything you might want to say to somebody who would see or hear your interview? Um, well, I think about this a lot of times, just especially the way um, I've got three kids. I've got three daughters. I have a 18 year old daughter who's starting college, 14 year old who's starting high school, and six year old who's going into first grade. And go to a lot they're all involved in sports and that type of thing but when you go it just seems like kids are a lot different now than what they used to be when it, you know, it seems like there's a lot of staying inside playing video games all I think that in my it's just my opinion but it seems to me like everybody I know we're not a communist country or anything, but it seems like everybody should have some kind of training, some kind of discipline. Um, I think it would help a lot if they, if people did some kind of a, um, or like they have the ROTC and that type of thing. If uh, if all all students had some kind of a, uh, wouldn't have to necessarily be military, but some kind of a program kind of like that, where they're doing getting the physical activity. They get the discipline, uh, that type of thing. Um, I think it would make a difference as far as the way things are now. I mean, we still live in the greatest country on on the planet, but um, you know, people just uh, falling behind on academics and that type of thing. There's other countries with like engineering. I just think it would help with everything as far as um, just discipline and um, I keep coming back to that but um, I think everybody should have to do some kind of a, not necessarily basic training but some kind of a disciplined um, structured training with both academics and uh, physical activity blended in together and um, maybe not all the yelling and screaming that you go through in, in basic training and maybe not quite that uh, as far as quite that stressful but I think it would make a difference as far as um, maybe just the way kids are brought up today I would like to I would like for my kids to go through that type of thing well, is there any, um, just any final comments um, that you can think of you would like to add? No, I think I've covered most everything.
All right. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today, and thank you for your service to okay. our country. Thank you.